If people had feathers, wolverine claws, long beaks, sharp teeth, and other features of animals, it wouldn't change our lives globally. We would pay more for manicure services, or wouldn't need knives, using our sharp claws instead. The culture of food consumption would change if we had long beaks. Feather care would create new branches in the field of fashion and self-care. All these things help animals survive in the wild, but they would be pointless for us. But what would change our lives completely would be a drop in our blood temperature. The circulation of cold fluids in our bodies would change our lifestyle and open up opportunities for physiological changes. The coolest thing is that the number of bacteria in our organisms would decrease significantly. Our warm bodies maintain the ideal temperature for both good and bad bacteria. But if we become cold, most microbes won't survive. They won't be able to reproduce, and we will go to the doctor less often. But there's a downside. Those rare microbes that can adapt to low temperatures would cause serious health problems. The fact is that cold blood can slow down your immune system. Protective cells will fight less effectively against unwelcome little guests. Another problem with cold-blooded people – they would depend on external conditions. We warm-blooded creatures can't live at extreme temperatures either, but our organisms can react to any changes and regulate the state of the body. For example, when we're hot, we sweat, and thus cool ourselves. When we feel cold, our muscles tense up, we start shaking, and the blood circulates faster in the vessels to warm us up. These features help to adapt to the cold and heat. But if we were cold-blooded, we'd lose the possibility of this regulation. We would be too sensitive to any temperature changes. Imagine all those reptiles living in home terrariums. Their owners buy expensive lamps to heat their homes. Our houses would look the same. With cold blood inside, we wouldn't become more resistant to the cold. We would become more dependent on warm conditions. We would waste a huge amount of energy on additional heaters and gas stoves. And during cold weather, we would spend all our money on heat. But our financial situation would remain the same because we would spend less money on food. Warm-blooded creatures use a lot of energy to maintain the high temperatures of their bodies. And they take this energy from food. Therefore, cold-blooded people would eat much less, and they would also have a slow metabolism. A hearty breakfast in the morning would be enough to function normally all day. However, not everyone can spend a lot of money on electricity. In cold regions, people would have to keep heaters on almost all year round. It would be much cheaper to move closer to the equator and not waste money on electricity at all. Almost all cold-blooded people would strive to live there. The northern parts of the planet would get empty, but in the southern regions, overpopulation would begin. A considerable number of people wouldn't be able to live comfortably on such small territories. The construction of hundreds of thousands of buildings, millions of cars with exhaust gases, factories, and plants on the equator would significantly worsen the environmental situation. More population density would lead to disaster. But fortunately, the coldness of our bodies would help us with this problem. You know that bears hibernate. These warm-blooded animals put on a lot of fat and then go to their den to sleep through the winter. And at this time, their body feeds on the accumulated fat. However, cold-blooded creatures are also capable of this. And unlike bears, they don't need to stock up on extra calories as they have much lower energy needs. Turtles and frogs can burrow into the silt under lakes and ponds and spend up to six months there. The liquid inside their bodies freezes, but the cells remain alive. This allows them to go through difficult times easily. So this ability would ideally help people reduce the load on the planet. Going to the equator is unnecessary if you can spend six months of winter in your bed. And people living on the equator could take turns doing it. Have you slept for six months? Great, now it's my turn. Of course, this would significantly change the planet's economy. Production capacity would drop. There would be fewer goods and services in the world. There would be fewer taxis in cities and fewer restaurants. But it would reduce the harm caused to the environment. Imagine how easy it would be to wait for the release of some movie or video game. And what would happen to our dreams? Flying in the clouds for six months 
or speaking with a group of mutant seagulls on another planet would be cool. Lucid dreaming training centers would be opening all over the world so that you could have fun during hibernation. But not all people would agree to such conditions. Imagine training hard, keeping a strict diet, and then just losing six months of your life. All your progress would disappear, and you'd have to start from the beginning. Interestingly, there would be fewer athletes in such a world. Another superpower of cold-blooded people would be the ability to live underwater. Dolphins, whales, seals, and other mammals live in seas and oceans. But for some reason, evolution hasn't given them gills. They can't extract oxygen from the water like fish, so they have to swim to the surface many times per day. The reason for this is their warm-bloodedness. Cold-blooded fish don't need a lot of oxygen. They extract a small part of it from the water with the help of gills, and it's enough for them. But this wouldn't be enough for warm-blooded creatures. If dolphins had gills, they would be huge, since dolphins need 15 times more oxygen per pound of their mass than cold-blooded fish. Gills need to constantly move large amounts of water to extract oxygen. Sharks must always be in motion to get the necessary supply. Now, if humans had gills, they would be gigantic, and we would have to swim very fast to get enough oxygen. But everything would be much easier if people were cold-blooded. Perhaps if we started living in the water, then evolution would give us gills in a couple of thousand years. We would have a better chance of regenerating with a low body temperature. Cold-blooded starfish, lizards, and salamanders can grow limbs and organs and even completely restore their entire body systems. With such a superpower, we would be able to defeat aging, save millions on doctor's visits, and avoid surgeries. But would we be able to fly if cold blood flowed in our veins? Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to grow wings. A bird is a warm-blooded creature with a fast metabolism. It needs a lot of oxygen and energy to fly. If people in some parallel universe could fly, their bones would be much lighter and more fragile, and their muscles would be more developed. Even with these anatomical changes, they wouldn't be able to fly freely like pigeons or sparrows. Flying people would be clumsy and barely maneuverable in the air. They would need to learn how to absorb more oxygen in flight. Otherwise, they would fly with oxygen tanks. Or probably evolution would make their lungs much bigger. Despite many pros, cold blood is still a disadvantage. Perhaps our brain wouldn't be as developed since it would need less energy. So it's good that our blood is warm. We don't have gills, but we cross oceans on ships. We don't regenerate fast, but we have advanced medicine. We have a fast metabolism, and there's a lot of delicious food in the supermarket. We now have the ideal body structure for a comfortable existence in this world. But how would our life change if our body temperature rose two times? Well, that's a story for another video. Hey, watch this space. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.